Hey everyone, welcome back to Lace Up Channel. My name is Mickey. Today we're going to do a demo of the Lace Up DSD software. Not just any version, the 2020 version, the one out right now in the street with over 7,000 drivers using it every single day. Today we're going to cover how drivers load out inventory, how they invoice off the truck, how they do credits, and at the end of the day, how you can reconcile their inventory, their payments, and their transactions. Anyways, Let's get right into it. So in the DSD industry, there's two ways to load inventory onto a driver's truck. The first way is you do a transfer on. Basically, the driver comes in with their tablet or handheld into the warehouse and they type in exactly what they're loading onto the truck. And then they print a little report. They give that to the warehouse guy. Warehouse guy counts the product versus what's on the report and ensures that the driver is not stealing out of the warehouse. That's one way to load out inventory into the driver's truck. The second way is called a load order. Basically, the driver with our system has the ability to send in a load on Monday, and then they have the ability to accept that load into their handheld on Tuesday when they go pick up the product. As they're accepting the product, they'll be able to make adjustments. For instance, if they ordered 10 and warehouse could only give them five, and nobody in the warehouse was able to adjust the quantity, they'll be able to do that right from their handheld. The nicest thing about these load orders is when they accept that load into their handheld, it transfers the inventory from the main inventory location to the truck. So you in the back office, you'll know exactly what the driver took with you. So let's do both of those processes. Now in order to start or initiate the process, we have to open the Laceup app. So on the top left here, you'll see the Laceup application. It's right here. We'll go ahead and tap on that. Okay. When we open the Laceup app, we'll see our route for the day. Now at this point, at this juncture, there's two options. Again, we can transfer on or we can accept the load. Now I've already preloaded a load onto this device so that I could show it to you on this demo. But what we're gonna do initially is do a transfer on. To do a transfer on, we go to inventory management. We go to create transfer on. Okay, we enter our password. Here are all the items that are enabled or available for me to transfer on. Let's go ahead and transfer on 10 of these of these and 10 of these when I'm done I simply hit save and then I have to I'm forced to print it out now this is a dig digital printout um, obviously it's available uh, digitally as well from your back office but from here on the device you'll see how it prints out it looks like this so right here on the transfer on report you'll see it's a transfer on the product the quantities that were transferred on the value and the total quantity. Okay, so that's how you transfer on product onto the tablet. Now remember how we talked about there's two methods to transfer on product onto your tablet. There's a transfer on and then there's the accept load. Now remember I've preloaded a load into here. If we go to accept load, we select today. Here's all the loads that have been picked and packed ready for me as a driver to accept into the handheld. If we tap on it, we'll see exactly what was on it. So right here, here's what's on that load. Let's say, for instance, that even though I ordered 10 of the 101 whole milk gallon, loadout only gave me five. I'm able to make that adjustment right here. Okay, and you'll see right here it turns red, indicating that we weren't able to accept it. Either way, in order to transfer this onto my inventory, I hit finish, and then I hit yes. Now, what that's going to do is it'll again print out a copy of what I've just accepted into inventory out of my thermal printer. So here's the thermal printer, and right here you'll see how it gives you what was loaded out right here, what was adjusted, you'll see I removed the five, and then what we left the warehouse with. Okay, so this is our loadout report. So we've just done a transfer, we've just done an accept load, and now let me show you what the total inventory on the truck looks like after both of those operations. So if we go to view print inventory, here's exactly what I have on the truck at this moment in time. Now remember, those two options are optional. You can choose one or the other or both. Now, we've got inventory on the truck. It's time to go to our customers and create some invoices. So here we have our route for the day, okay? The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna service the first customer on this route. So let's go to convenience store number one. On top, we'll have the convenience store details and below, we'll have any open invoices. With LaceUp, you can collect payments, whether it's a cash check, money order, credit card payment, and apply it to one or multiple invoices. So, what we are going to do, uh, if we don't have any payments to collect, we'll go to Menu, and we'll go to Create Clock In. Then, we are going to go to Menu, Sales Invoice. Now, there's four ways to add product onto an invoice. 
The first way is using a historical template, which we can generate based on your history and your accounting system. The second way is scanning product using either a Bluetooth scanner or built-in handheld. The third way is using a product catalog, or the fourth way is, is searching for the product. Now, for the purposes of this demo, let's go ahead and search for the, world, the word milk. When we type that in, the system will pull up all the items with that keyword milk and inventory on our truck. Let's go ahead and add five of these to the invoice five of these to the invoice, five of these, and when I'm done, I'll hit add items, and done. Here's our invoice. You'll see it has a little check mark next to it. Anyways, let's go ahead and print out that invoice. Let's see what that looks like. So out of the printer, you're going to get the invoice. It's gonna have the invoice, customer name, items, all the things that need to go on any respective invoice. So here we have the invoice printout. You'll see, again, our name, customer's name, items that I'm dropping for the customer, barcodes in case the customer wants to scan off the barcode, and down here we have the invoice totals. So we've just made and printed out our initial invoice. Now, the nice thing is that this is a pre-invoice. We're still able to go back into the invoice and make adjustments if need be. Now, this is an optional setting for those of you that want to let your drivers adjust the invoice prior to finalizing it. For those of you that want to lock it after printing, we support that as well. Either way, when you're done with the invoice, okay, you're still able to go in and add a credit as well. So if we go here to credit, let's go ahead and credit a couple dumped milk gallons. So we'll go here. You'll see it'll ask you dump or return. Dump means that that product is not going to affect your inventory. Return means that that product is going to get returned back to inventory. So let's do one of each. Let's do five of these. Let's hit back that plus symbol and do three of these. Now I know it's unrealistic to do both at the same time, but I just want to show you the most extreme scenario. Here's our credit. Okay, let's go ahead and print that out. Now again, you can wait to print both of these out once you've been done creating both documents. So here's the credit invoice. Sales invoice. Credit invoice. Now bear in mind that I've just done them separately. You could also do them on the same transaction um, so that you can collect cash. That's normally used for cash customers. Uh, regardless, when we're done, whether it's on the same or on a separate invoice, we're gonna check mark these transactions like so. We are gonna hit the finalize button right up here. And once I hit finalize, I've got the option to collect a signature, print the invoice, and then I'm done. Let's go ahead and collect the signature. Now the reason why it's telling me to collect the signature here in this example is because this customer is a charge account. If I wanted to print out a copy of that invoice with the signature, I could hit print and it would print out with the signature. So let's go ahead and do that. And you'll see how it prints out both transactions with the signature. Back to the printer. You'll see right there, there's your signature. There is the finalized credit. And here's the finalized invoice with the signature on it as well. So we've just created a credit and invoice. We collected a signature because it was a charge account and we printed out the invoice with the signature. Now printing out the invoice with the signature, that's optional, uh, but either way, you'll be able to pull up the digital copy of that invoice with the signature out of your back office system. Now, once I'm done servicing the customer, you'll see how both of the transactions say finalized in green. This means that I'm now able to clock out of this customer. So to do so, I'm gonna go right up here and hit clock out, and it'll put a green little check mark next to the customer indicating that we're done with that service. Now we're on to the next customer. So we'll do the exact same process on this customer, which I'm not gonna go through. The difference here is I wanna show you uh, another case. So when you get to a customer, you have the option of creating an invoice, creating a credit, but you also have the option of no servicing the customer. No service means that you arrived at the customer, but you weren't able to conclude the service because the customer wasn't available, because you didn't have the product, because X, Y, or Z happened. So to do a no service, we tap right here where it says no service. Once we hit that, it'll give us all the options. Let's say that the manager wasn't available today. Okay, and once we tap that, you'll see it'll put a green check mark next and clock me right out. Now the nice thing about Lace Up it is that it's going to require that you conclude each of these stops and either service a customer or not service a customer. When you're done, 
When you're done servicing every single customer on the list, you're able to do something called an end of day close. The end of day close happens when the driver returns back to the warehouse or when they go home for the rest of the day and they're ready to close out their day. Now keep in mind that the lace of transactions, all the invoices, all the credits created throughout the day, if the driver has a network connection, will transmit live to your system. But if the driver does not have a network connection, which the system works 100% offline, then you have to wait until the end of the day for the driver to transmit those transactions. So let's go ahead and do an end of day close. In the end of day close, there's a set of options, okay? You have a route returns option. So if you want to be able to unload some product from the truck's inventory, you would use that route returns option. Let's go ahead and tap on that. And you'll notice how that route returns option is gonna show us the credits and the dumps that we picked up of that item. Route returns are exactly as they sound, anything being returned from the route back to inventory. Now, obviously, these returns right here, okay, right now are being carried over. You'll see how the unload is zero. These dumps, they're being taken off. So if I wanted to return the good inventory, I could just simply tap here and put five. That would return those credit items off the truck back to my inventory. If I wanted those credit items to carry over, I simply wouldn't touch that valley and move on. Now this screen is only accessible by the administrator, as is the ending inventory screen. Right here you'll see all the values left on the truck right now. This is exactly what's left. If I wanted to cycle count this truck, I would simply change any of these values and it would, it would create an overage or a shortage. So let's say I go count the truck and instead of 15 I counted 10. That would create a shortage of five for that item. Last but not least, I'm going to do my end of day reports. Now keep in mind, if the driver doesn't return, they won't be doing route returns or ending inventory every day. Those activities will be reserved for administrators in the warehouse when the driver finally gets back. But if you guys want your driver to be able to edit their inventory, we can leave it open as well. The system is configurable however you'd like. Anyways, at the end of every day, the driver has the option to print their end of day reports. End of day reports, comprise of three reports. One is a sales register. Secondly is the payments received report. And third of all is the inventory settlement. Here is the sales register, which we'll cover in detail in a moment. Okay. And then you're going to have the payments received report. And last but not least, you'll have the inventory settlement report. Okay. Let's go through each one. So on the sales register report, we have exactly what customers were visited how long the driver was at each of the customers, what happened at each stop. You can see right here we have a no service and it tells you that the customer or the manager was not available. How much the invoice total was, what the invoice number was, how much we had in sales, credit, and bills, how many transactions we did, how many hours we worked, okay? We have expected cash, what was paid, what was charged, and then the total sales for the day. This is what we call our sales register. The second report is a payment received report. So had I collected any cash check, money order, credit card, that would be reported here. It would show me the invoice number, the total, the amount, the method, okay, and the reference number. This is so I can simply take this report and the money from the driver, reconcile it, and then post those transactions to the accounting system. And then last but not least is the inventory settlement report. The inventory settlement report shows you what was left over from the previous day. In this case, you can see that yesterday I had nothing on the truck. Um, what I loaded out today, what adjustments were made on my loadout, what was transferred on in addition to that inventory. So if you remember at the beginning of the day, I did a transfer on and I accepted a pending load order. Okay, what I sold off the truck right here under sales, what was returned to inventory, what dumps I picked up, what I returned from the truck back to the main warehouse. And last but not least, what was left on the truck. Now, if you remember on this item, this said 15 and I changed it to a 10, assuming that I'm the administrator in the warehouse and I went to the truck and counted 10. You'll see right here how it calculates a shortage of five. Now, all of this inventory will be carried over to the next day. We have a second option if, if your drivers are delivery drivers, for example, we're able to route return or unload everything automatically. And instead of auditing what's remaining on the truck, the system will audit what's getting unloaded off the truck. So the system is very flexible to however you and your drivers work. Now, last but not least, after all that's done, the reports have been printed, everything's been reconciled, the driver's gonna tap this button right here. That is going to transmit all information from this device to your back office. Okay, this 
transmission will put, and you'll see right here it says success, that the information has been sent. This transmission will place all of these transactions in a screen in a queue in the back office so that you can reconcile everything and with the push of a button, you can export thousands of invoices directly into your accounting system. Once those invoices are exported, then you can go over to your payments and export those as well. And the system will apply the payments to the invoices right in your accounting system. Now, anyways, guys, I hope that that demo helped. I tried to be as thorough as possible to cover all the points. The problem is, is that the system does so much. We've got over 3000 configurations that I can't possibly cover it all in a demo. Now you may think to yourself, I may work a little bit different than what Mickey's showing on this demo. That's the case in almost all of my presentations to all my potential customers. The bottom line is, if you work a little bit different, hit me down in the comments below and tell me how you're different and I'll tell you whether or not we support your workflow. Either way guys, I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to providing value for you and your company. I look forward to being your DSD vendor for the next 30, 40, 50 years. Anyways, have a great rest of your day. Take care.